Hello, I'm still Jonathan Ross. You're just about to watch the very first episode of Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Now, it might seem pretty much like a standard American talk show, but there was so much going on behind the scenes that it became a television event. And as you probably know, in America, that's better than being a real event. When His Majesty, David Letterman, left NBC to set up his base on CBS, NBC, who realized that they'd screwed up in a major way by letting the very popular Dave get away, decided they had to try and fill his lucrative time slot with a similar show. Now, they rounded up all of the usual suspects. Dana Carvey from Saturday Night Live and Wayne's World and Gary Shandling. In fact, it's even been reported that Shandling was offered a $20 million contract, but he begged off saying he didn't feel there was enough time to prepare. And anyway, he was busy sending the whole business up as Larry Sanders. NBC left it up to Lorne Michaels, the creator of Saturday Night Live, to come up with the goods. And instead of doling out this plum job to one of his showbiz cronies, Michaels anointed a gangly 30-year-old writer with virtually no performance experience. Conan O'Brien, the young man in the very hot seat, had been in the writing pool for both Saturday Night Live and The Simpsons before taking the million-dollar-a-year summons to swim or sink in the turbulent waters of late night. Rather than try and position himself as yet another silver tongue smoothie, Conan decided to play off his breathtaking lack of experience, positioning himself as a wide-eyed, arse-shucks sort of neophyte. And you can see this in the opening sequence, in which he plays off his expectations and the pressure of trying to fill the shoes of the sublime David Letterman. Conan's band leader is Max Weinberg, formerly with Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. And one night, Conan quipped that it's the first talk show where the band leader is more famous than the host. You know what? It's funny because it's true. His opening night guests include John Goodman and Drew Barrymore, but stay tuned for the appearance of Tony Randall. Now, Tony Randall is one of those guys who's known in the business as Mr. Emergency Fill-In, the sort of guest you call at the very last minute when the person you really want on the show lets you down, kind of like Kenneth Williams used to be on British talk shows. But it's weird to see someone like that on what should have been a big special opening night gala. Of course, though, there are no rules. Watch his sequence carefully and see if you can work out whether he is being bitchy to be funny or whether he really is just trying to give the new kid a hard time. But enjoy the show. <laughs> 